Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got a story of malicious compliance on a 10 year old kid. But first a story from delayed loading. You need me to have my ID? Sure, I can get that. I just bought a house with my spouse. Yay, great time too with this market I know. And it's a new build. I'm going through setting up all the utilities and such so we can live comfortably. One of these utilities is internet, which has been giving me a headache for a few days now. There's only one option for the home since it's a new build, so unless I want to wait for someone else to lay their cables and such, I need to go through them. No biggie, they already have fiber already along the street, and as I and my spouse work from home, fiber is a great option. The first two times I attempt to set up for a technician to come out and connect our house to the fiber line, I'm met with arrival dates that change to 14 years from the day the technician was supposed to come. The first time I was confused and called in. I was told something was wrong with the account. Okay, I'll set up a new one and order a technician for the following day. Annoying, but doable. The next day, 14 years gets added to the arrival date again. Call in again and get passed around technical support until I just ask for someone to tell me what is happening. Apparently, support can't tell me because it's on the technician side and they can't see the technician side of things. Great. I decide to go in with my spouse to talk to people in the store, since online and over the phone have only served to give me headaches. There, I met with a simple issue before they can help me. I forgot my driver's license. Without my driver's license, they can't get into my account. I tell the associates helping me and my spouse that I have a picture of my ID on my phone and can just show it to them. They can't take that and ask me to call back after I go get my ID, handing me a specific associate's card with their number. Q malicious compliance. My spouse and I leave, driving to a place to eat dinner and call the associate in the car. We told him it might take 20 minutes for me to get my ID. The restaurant we went to was about two minutes away. I lead the call with my name and ask if he can get into my account now that I have my ID and says he can. He comments that this was a lot faster than he thought it would be and I just responded with a yep and read my ID number off the picture I had of it in my phone. The call lasted about 30 minutes instead of the total 50 it would have taken if we had driven home to get my ID, and we went to eat dinner right after the call was done. Nothing's been fixed yet, but after all the issues I was having, this felt like a nice win. I'm really confused here because why would they make such a stink about needing the actual physical ID card? But then it's totally okay if you're saying like, well I'm on the way back or I have it in my possession, you'll just have to take my word for it. I guess because maybe the associate could tell they literally didn't have the card, they couldn't do it. But over the phone, you just have to like take their word for it, I guess. Also, I'm kind of curious, when it comes to like internet and cable companies, have you guys ever felt legitimately good about any business you've ever done with them? I feel like almost everybody universally has some kind of issue with how the way their internet or cable was set up. Whether it's the monopoly they have in the area, the quality of service, the setup, the fees. Let me know how you guys land on that scale in the comments down below. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Silas Breakdown, my 6 step protest of the stupid new company shirts. I, 21 year old male, work at a grocery store, started as a courtesy clerk or bag boy for the uncultured, but recently I've been training to be a checker. Yesterday, I was scheduled as a courtesy clerk, and I assumed it was going to be a normal day. Several months ago, the dress code was relaxed to a significant degree. Before, we had to wear one of a few different company-issued shirts. However, mid-December, we were told that we could now wear whatever we want within reason. Apparently, the store director has a different definition of within reason than the rest of us. So I started wearing my favorite shirts, normally the one from Ruby or the one with Transformers on it. Yesterday, I wore the TF shirt. Upon arrival, everyone was wearing the same blue shirt advertising the store's new mobile game. You know how some stores have promotions where you get a few tickets with every purchase that you can redeem for a chance to win prizes? Well, someone at corporate decided to do that, but in mobile game form. And honestly, I think the shirts are kind of stupid. From here on, I'll call them the Foo shirt. I was told that all checkers had to wear them, but my manager, I'll call her Patty, said she'd check with the store director, Greg, if that applied to courtesy clerks too. While Patty checked on that, I started my floor sweep. Now, about Greg, he's legitimately a great boss. There seems to be a recurring pattern with these stories where the boss has no idea how things actually work, 
and is just a penny pincher or whatever. Greg defies all stereotypes. He helps out all over the store. He's even been known to help bag groceries if things get nuts, though that hasn't happened in quite some time. He's also the one who showed me how to snake a toilet. Very hands-on. One time he worked in the bakery for a month straight until more staff were hired. Honestly, as my first boss, he's kind of setting up all my future bosses for failure. All this to say, I wasn't trying to get back at him for anything. I was just trying to have some harmless fun and protest a rule I think is stupid. So anyway, turns out all front end staff have to wear the foo shirts. Fine, I spent the floor sweep coming up with ideas to peacefully and playfully protest. Malicious compliance number one, I wore the foo shirt as a headband. It wasn't long enough to tie, so I taped it down. Patty saw me like that, smiled, and told me I probably had to wear it, wear it. Malicious compliance number two, I put the foo shirt on in the bathroom, then put the TF shirt on over it, making sure you could see the foo sleeves. That one got caught by Greg, who told me the foo shirt needs to be over. Malicious compliance number three, this one was my favorite, and I think it lasted the longest. I called it the tape cape. I put on the Transformer shirt and then draped the Foo shirt's leaves over my shoulders and taped them into place. Eventually I got the idea to use a pride pin to save a piece of tape, but I'm still calling it the tape cape because it rhymes and I love it. Took Patty quite a while before she noticed. Both shirts are blue, and she laughed. She didn't tell me to change it or anything. Eventually Greg saw me and told me to wear it right. His mistake was not defining right. Malicious compliance number four. I put the Transformer shirt away and actually started wearing the Foo shirt. Head in the hole and arms in the armholes, just inside out is all. This one might have lasted longer than the tape cape, but I wasn't keeping track. Greg didn't notice at first, but when he did, he just said my name in a disappointed tone, so I figured it was time to change tactics. Malicious compliance number five, backwards. That's all, just backwards. Greg came up to me to give me my three-year pin and told me I almost had it right. Giving me the pin was a mistake, though, because I had one more trick up my unwanted sleeve. Malicious compliance number six. You may be thinking I've exhausted my options at this point. I have to wear the Foo shirt the proper way now, don't I? Yes, I do. But no one told me I couldn't wear a cape. Yep, I did a reverse of the tape cape. So the Transformer shirt was covering the graphic with inexcusable pins on the back. I used the pride pin and the three-year pin that had just been given to me. That lasted all of 30 seconds, so I unpinned the TF shirt and put my hoodie on. At that point, Greg said that he was going to put a more clear copy of the dress code up near the punch-in clock and in the break room. Remember when I said that he and I had different definitions of within reason? Yeah, apparently we were allowed to wear whatever we want as long as it's plain color slash plaid and has no logos or graphics on this. So actually, as I write this, it's occurring to me that as written, the Foo shirts are in violation of the dress code. I guess I could start writing reports about everybody violating the dress code, but that would cross the line from harmless fun into needlessly petty. Maybe I'll just put up a post-it note on the dress code. So yeah. In conclusion, I exhausted all my options and had to wear the Foo shirt right side out, tag in the back, with nothing covering it for the rest of the day, which by that point was less than an hour. From all indications, this will last as long as the promo will, about a month. Then we'll switch back to normal plain clothes. It's a bummer that I won't get to wear my Ruby and Transformer shirts to work anymore, but honestly I'd rather go plain and boring than the Foo shirts, just out of principle at this point. I know OP's trying to be smart and playful and bend the rules and really try to find that line where they can and can't get away with it, but honestly, I'm surprised that OP was kind of allowed to go that far. I'm not sure what country OP resides in, and therefore I'm not sure about how sturdy employment is and how easy it would be to fire somebody for menial reasons, but I just know that there would be a lot of managers that if somebody goes and tries six times in the same day to try to break a dress code rule as a courtesy clerk, a lot of them would say screw it, pack up, go home. Our next story is from SG Frizzle, go outside. All the childhood malicious compliance posts recently have reminded me of a story my grandmother told me about my father. When he was about 13, my grandmother told him to go outside. My dad is a serious TV addict, and I inherited his habits of always having the TV on, even if I'm not watching. 
because him staying inside and watching television all day wasn't good for him, about 30 minutes later, she found him outside, as instructed. However, he was sitting on the porch with the window open and the TV loud enough that he could hear it and angled it so he could watch from his seat. Poor grandma couldn't really argue with that one. Well, at least they were getting at least probably small amounts of vitamin D sitting out there. That's better than not getting any vitamin D at all, right? This next story is from an unoriginal user ID. Get this as far away from the house as possible. When I was six or seven, my father was changing my sister's diaper. My dad made me laugh by over-exaggerating how badly it smelled and making silly faces. He handed me the used diaper and said, Get this as far away from the house as possible. Instead of disposing it in one of the more giant trash cans that we kept in the garage, I walked to the edge of our property line and promptly dropped the diaper off in the neighbor's yard. My dad saw me outside the window empty-handed and asked why I was outside. And that's when I explained where I'd put the diaper. He laughed and then promptly went to the neighbor's yard to properly throw the diaper away. Frankly, if I was the dad, I don't know if I would laugh. I think I would be more mortified that my kid went and dropped a poopy diaper off in the neighbor's yard and I'd be praying that the neighbor didn't see it. The nice thing here though is 6 or 7 year old OP knew that they couldn't leave the boundaries of the yard, so they went as far as they possibly could. This next story is from Vorash00, cup of tea slash coffee. Not so much malicious, but I remember as a child thinking I was hilarious for bringing my mom a cup of coffee and my dad his cup of tea they requested. I'm sure you know where this is going. I did this by filling up their cups with coffee granules and tea bags respectively. They got what they asked for, and I was in fits of giggles for ages afterwards. It was the best joke ever at that age. I can imagine it's very nice if you can get your kids to go fetch something for you. But I think that does come with its own asterisk of knowing that kid, depending on how old they are or how malicious they are, could do just about anything they want in between them going and getting it and being on their way back. Our next story is from Tabaxi Druid. Clean my room? On it. My mom loves to tell this story about when I was five or so. She told me to clean my room. I didn't. After a few times of me ignoring her, she said, If you don't clean your room, I'll clean it. And if I clean it, I'm throwing away everything that isn't put away properly. Well, that got my attention. I went to my room for a while, then came back and announced, Okay, mommy, you can clean it now. I've put away anything I care about. To be honest, I don't remember doing it, but I'm pretty proud of tiny me. Mom thinks it's pretty hilarious that she got outsmarted by a child. I can only imagine the parents' feelings in that moment. They're like, oh, I finally convinced them to clean up their room. Then they go and clean up maybe 15, 25% and say, okay, I don't care about the rest. Enjoy. Really walked into that one, didn't I? Our next story is from Tokek Cowboy. Hold your breath. I used to live in Bali near a toll bridge that cut across the ocean to another part of the island. The bridge was something like 10 kilometers long. So despite driving quickly, it took a few minutes to cross. One of the first times we drove across the bridge, I told my sons that I would pay 100,000 rupiah a bit less than 10 US dollars at the time, to anyone who could hold their breath all the way across the bridge. I did this because hold your breath across the bridge is a game that my family often plays, and it was easy entertainment for me with essentially no financial risk, or so I thought. A couple of months later, as we were flying back to Bali after a conference in another part of the country, I noticed the toll bridge as we were descending towards the airport. Without thinking, I pointed it out to my oldest, nine-year-old son, before we flew right over it, from side to side, not end to end. He quickly and visibly held his breath and exhaled five seconds later before turning to me and saying smugly, You owe me a hundred thousand rupiah. Of course, I wanted to argue, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized he'd won. I never said end to end, and I never said in a car. I just said he needed to hold his breath all the way across the bridge, which he did. He got his money, and I couldn't help but be proud of him. OP's proud and sticking to their commitment, but little do they know they're just raising that kid to get even more smarter with how they can apply malicious compliance in the real world. Maybe it's for the best though. And our final story is from Bando Man. Malicious compliance backfires for my then 10-year-old son. Just a small humorous anecdote. When my oldest son was around 10 years old, he was sent into a timeout for some infraction. I told him he had to sit on the stairs for 5 minutes. 
I don't remember what he had done, but it couldn't have been that bad because after a couple of minutes, I must have felt that I overreacted and told him he could come back and play with his brothers. He replied angrily, that wasn't five minutes. So he sat there until his full timeout was up. We still laugh about it to this day. I wonder if this was actually in an attempt to make you feel bad for punishing them so severely for something that OP clearly felt didn't justify being in timeout for five minutes over. For you to break, go back to your kid and say, all right, all right, you can stop now. And for them to look you in the eye and say, no, that wasn't the five minutes you told me to wait. Maybe that was meant to strike you right in the heart for punishing them. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another malicious compliance story that was even more insane than the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you all next time for some more stories.